It's been said that the toughest thing to achieve in the Christian life is balance. The couple joining me have made life balance a priority. And when we hear about all that they do, you're going to understand something of the challenge they faced. Jeff and Allie Payne have come from Calgary, Alberta. And I want to just give you a little bit of fact here. We'll set the stage. Jeff participated in three Olympic Games, winning silver in 2006, finishing sixth in 2002, and ninth in 2010 in a sport with a really peculiar name, skeleton. Uh, these and many other athletic achievements give this man the elite performance designation. He's now officially retired from the sport of skeleton, but helping others to achieve that excellence. Ali, his wife of 14 years, has, uh, take a look at the two of them, a lot of letters <laughs> after your name. I'm going to say the letters, CPCC, PCC, and ORSCC. And I need to buy a vowel now. You're right. Those are all causes. <laughs> what is all that? Those are my professional designations as a coach through um, the International Coach Certi Federation that are recognized. It would be like someone who has a degree in human resources putting or a Bachelor of Science after their name. So um, in the coaching world, they mean things. And to the rest of us, they're just fun. Wow. Now, this is not athletics. No. This is 15 years of, of coaching people to reach their highest and best yes. in whatever they're doing. We yes. mentioned the Canadian tenors. Yeah. Uh, wow, what a fun profession. As we look at this, we say, I mean, here is a match set. Two people who are all about peak performance. Mm. I know, I know you're holding back and I want you to, <laughs> because I want to look at some golden moments first. We have some uh, Olympic moments. Let's, um, let's look at these. This is that thing I was talking about. What, what does, why did oh, skeleton become the name of this type of sledding? No, honestly, I don't know. There's a couple of theories that uh, this, the sled, there's a, a Norwegian word, skele, which means sled. Some people that. say it's, yeah. it's a bare bones type of sled because it is a very simple implement. Very, so. it's just you and that board. Yeah. Um, those were from which Olympics, the ones we just saw? Those were from 2002. Oh, city. two. Yeah. Let's keep going. Okay. How fast are you going when you're on that sled, <laughs> Jeff? Uh, generally around 120 kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. I've, I have gone 145 kilometers an hour in Whistler. That looks like a silver medal to me. That was uh, Torino 2006, just after I right after got presented the, the medal, right after the medal ceremony. Yeah. Marvelous. Now, were mom and the boys there? Um, I was in Italy and in Salt Lake City. Uh, we only had one in Salt Lake City who was 10 months old, so he was at home. We, of course. My mother was, um, was kind enough to stay with our boys while we were in Italy. They were just about three and five, so a little young to be hauling around uh, Italy. And in Vancouver, we had the privilege of bringing them because this is all they'd ever known. So that was the boys and I in, uh, on our road trip to Vancouver to, Vancouver. to go see Dad. Wow. I think we have a few more. Yeah, so there's me right after my final run of my career in 2010. At the Who are you giving that uh, fist check Actually, your son to. was in that picture. Oh, yeah. isn't that neat? Yeah, and that's us. Here it's is. over. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now, the book, The Business of Marriage and uh, Medals, uh, you've prayed about performance. I, I'm just thinking about all the talk about ho praying hockey players <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've had some dramatic uh, results after praying and asking for God's help. Yeah, yeah lots. Yeah, there's. Uh, I can't think of an example other than I know that when I set my track record in Calgary, there is no way to go that fast in Calgary without a little bit of a push. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, you know, this is just all um, glorious, and here's what happened to me. I picked up that you'll forgive me when there's pictures in a book. I think a lot of people go to the pictures. Would you go we to the pictures? Do that. So I look at this cute couple who met interestingly <laughs> oh, in look at this is the same people who met in Vancouver where you grew up, Allie, in nineteen eighty six. I turn the page. By the way, you you were born in Anchorage, Alaska. Right, yeah. Jeff? Are you do you have dual citizenship? I do, yeah. Oh, cool. Now look at this, 10 years later, they're engaged on the left. 
Um, this is the official engagement photo, and on the right, one year later, March 29th, 1997, you said, I do. And I'm telling you, the rest of the pictures are really cool, Olympic and together moments, and I'm not quite sure where I clued in that this is a book about a crisis. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes, it is. When Genius. did this story become a crisis for you? Your life together. I mean, can you can you appreciate? I mean, I think it was a a physical sound came out of me when I realized, oh, yeah, yeah. On the honeymoon. On the honeymoon. On the honeymoon. Yeah. We call it the last dinner. The we, last dinner. The last supper. Yeah. Which the picture is, I think, in there, right? The, the photo is in the book. Yeah, of the last supper. The but even that looked wonderful. Pants. I know the that, photo. That more was. This is in was Australia. Top here. That photo there is the most poised. Um, You're faking it. Faking, yep. faking photo that there is. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. You'd actually been friends f for how for long? Ten. Since we were thirteen. Ten, ten since, years. Since you were thirteen. Fourteen, 14 years. Fourteen years. Yeah. What? What was sour? It was, um, you know, that that the last night of our honeymoon was when I got to a point where. Um, now, I was not great at communicating boundaries and uh, speaking for what was honorable for me. I didn't, I don't think I actually knew that. And the last night of that honeymoon is when it all came out, was that I was starting to have the experience that our marriage, our relationship and me all came second to skeleton. Um, our entire honeymoon was budgeted around his budget for skeleton. Um, and it just all came out in one spewing conversation fight. <laughs> on, on, in the walk to the dinner. We on the walking, walk to the dinner. Walking from the, the hostel to the, yeah. to the restaurant, yeah. yeah. Now you knew going into this alley that you'd married an Olympian. Well, yes and no. I no. was great at the ostrich, the head in the sand. Oh. I was perfect at that. So I really, this was someone I had known for so long that I was taking the data that I had past, not who is this now and who is this amazing man wanting to become and where is God directing him and I thought oh this skeleton thing is a bit of a hobby, it won't go any, it's, I did not understand and did not have the conversation with Jeff that was necessary about what does this look like, what will it cost, I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. How did this hit you, Jeff? That was the, a bit of a blind side because we had I had thought we had discussed <laughs> the plan, I call it. I always the say, plan. it's like the plan. We have a plan, we're living the plan. What's wrong with this plan? You said I do, yeah. that means you agreed. We're, we agreed to this plan. So <laughs> we didn't know how to really project ourselves into the future and, mm -hmm. and understand the realities of what that meant. Mm -hmm. And I was, I guess, not clear to Ali and maybe even within myself as far as where did I want this sport to go and how far did I want to take it and how how hard did I want to try at it and what did that really mean for me and the people around me and and I was a, in a very selfish I'm gonna do this place um, it took me many 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 years to learn how to create a team around me that would help me get where I wanted to go rather than just trying to do it all myself you're both all about having a plan and pursuing it with excellence. Right. Did you then sit down and say, okay, we have a problem here. Let's figure out how we're going to make it work. Not for about six years. Yeah. Six, <laughs> years six years later. Six years later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it had was, to get a little messier first. It did. It did, yeah. And yeah. prior to 2006, like 2004-ish, yeah. we, we finally came to an agreement on how to do it together and, and, and what it meant. and and how it was going to work and things that I had to, basically conditions that I had to meet um, so that I could pursue my dream in the winter, which was making sure, one of the key things was making sure there was enough money in the bank account to pay the mortgage while I was gone. You know, provide that sense of security, the, well not sense, the reality of security mm -hmm. to Ali and um, while I was away pursuing my dream. So it was making sure I took care of my family first and putting the sport a little bit second. That was a hard lesson. Help us understand the realities of, of pursuing sport 
at this level. I mean, I think people think if you win a medal, you, you yes. get the, you know, you you're hit the jackpot, and you're set for life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, it's, every sport is expensive, isn't it? If, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's... If you're competing at this level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's not just even the sport expenses. You know, sure, sleds cost money, and runners cost money, and suits cost money, and it's it's the time away. I mean, in the winter, I would be away for anywhere from 9 to 15 weeks over a four-month, five-month span. Mm 